Pepto-Bismol colored walls in the background, maybe the guy, the guy's a Canadian, you know he's Canadian, he talks about a Mountie, God is like a Mountie, he always gets his man. Okay. Uh, the staccato way he speaks is also pretty awesome, so my first exposure to that was this morning, so I couldn't wait to share it with you. I also figured it would uh, be a good uh, way for me to pretty much say whatever I want, and uh, it's going to pale in comparison to that. So since it's Halloween, I brought this, uh, my mask, my Halloween mask. What do you think? It's pretty good? Pretty cool? My sister got this down in Oaxaca when she was uh, on avoiding uh, Christmas celebrations because she's married to an atheist. So she was uh, goes to Mexico during Christmas time, so she didn't have to uncomfortably sit next to her uh, uh, Christian uh, dad, minister, father, and brother doing our church services. I'm wearing this today, and uh, as as kind of a tribute to that. Anyone know what this kind of mask is used for? What's it called? Anybody know? Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. Okay, and what what does he do? He's a wrestler. He's a wrestler. It's for wrestling. So candy for, for the one who here. Plenty to go around here. <laughs> Smarties or Tootsie Rolls. Take it and pass it. So, I like it. I like this mask. This uh, luchador mask. And uh, it got me thinking about what we do on Halloween. You know, it's Halloween, in case you were living under a rock. And... Uh, Oh, but first of all, what you do with this uh, mask is that you wrestle with it, and uh, I, this is kind of a, something that I have enjoyed over the past couple of years. I have a, a copy of this, it's actually a stenograph of this work by J Jack Bumgarner, who's an artist up in Wichita. Uh, I met him, kind of got the conversation started with him, and uh, anyone know what this uh, picture is up here? What's happening here? Can anyone tell? Wrestling? Wrestling. You might not be able to see it. I didn't have any notes on here, so might as well move this out of the way. Yes, that's wrestling. It's a story from the Bible. Could you step back a minute? Anybody? <laughs> we can't see over here. Okay. Anybody know what story that is in the Bible? Jacob wrestling God. Jacob wrestling God, right. So, um, and I like it. I like it, uh, one, for a couple of reasons. One, okay, so just a little, last time on Nathan Maddox comes to Wesley Foundation. This is actually what I spoke about, but I know some of you probably weren't here that day. So just a quick reprise. Look at where God is grabbing Jacob. You see that? So during this wrestling match, it doesn't say this in the Bible. This is kind of an invention of the artist, which I think is a really clever invention because it kind of speaks to something, uh, a theological perspective perhaps. This is God's, uh, this is God right here, the one in the row. Jacob is, is naked, uh, wrestling. God, I, I like this whirlwind here because the chaos, God comes and speaks out of the chaos according to, uh, according to Job, right, the book of Job. And, uh, and then he's grabbing Jacob here on his ankle, right? Anyone know the story of Jacob's birth? Jacob is a twin, right? So his, his twin brother comes out first, and Jacob is grabbing onto his uh, ankle as he's being born. And so he's kind of grasping is kind of uh, a, a meaning of his name, grasping. And so God is grasping him. Okay, so what is one way that God grasps us? What's one way that uh, uh, God gets our attention? Uh, is, is sort of what the key is to knowing how to tell your own story, your own witness, your own testimony about Jesus grabbing you. I, I was raised in the church. I'm a, as I've said before, I'm a minister's son, uh, Methodist minister's son. I grew up in the church. It's kind of like my home. 
Okay, uh, usually, sometimes I live right next door to the church. I spent a lot of time in the church, and I treated the church basically like it was my second home. Good for good and for ill, right? Breaking windows and all that kind of stuff that preacher's kids get into. Um, but when you spend a lot of time in a place, it kind of grows on you. And uh, so, I made it my own profession too, or, or didn't exactly make it my own profession, I was called to it. I'll talk to you a little bit about how I was called to it. David, we do the next slide. Okay, so today is uh, all, is all Hallow's Eve, all All Saints Eve, or it's the Eve of All Saints Day. Uh, November first, in kind of the British Isles, among the Celts and some of those people who predated the Christians, uh, celebrated a, a a holiday on November first called Samhain. I think it's on November first. And so the Christians came in, they said, what happens on Samhain? Well, the veil between the living and the dead is thin on Samhain. That's why people dress up as ghosts and ghouls and stuff like that and put candy out for the ghosts and ghouls who might be, you know, wandering around looking for a place to haunt. So you put something on your doorstep and they'll stay away from your house. That's why we trick or treat. And, uh, and so, the, so the Christians thought, well, we can also celebrate this day called uh, All Saints Day on, uh, on November 1st. And, uh, and so it's going to be an important day for you to be in church, pagans. <laughs> We're going to think about all the people who have died over the past year and all those saints that we want to glorify, and they'll be uh, lifted up in this special mass. Okay? And, uh, and so then the pagans say, okay, we'll do that. And then, and then to us, as, as Paul said in his letters, uh, it's not something we can really grasp with our minds, uh, what our new body will be like, and uh, and how we will live on after death. And I just figured this is kind of a good uh, a good focus for us on this day, on this All Hallows Eve, thinking about death, and thinking about the saints of light, and thinking about our place in the cloud of witnesses as living members. As I said about the uh, mask that I have, you know, sometimes we wear, uh, sometimes we wear masks, and we we lose our focus. As one of the students said uh, before we before our gathering today, he said, students oftentimes we just not only lose our focus on tests, but we lose our focus on kind of like the test of life, right? We lose our focus as to as who who and who whose we are, right? Uh, and when we lose confidence, maybe. You lose your focus, you lose confidence, don't you? You don't really perform well on a test if you lose your focus, you lose your confidence, and it's just, you're off the rails, kind of. Well, um, Paul said, don't, uh, don't fret about what the uh, world hereafter is going to be. Just know that God's got you in God's hands. Like, you're... you're the, the, our new body is glorious. It's something that we can't even comprehend right now. And, uh, and I like this painting because this is also an All Saints Day painting representing the, the saints of light in kind of a transfigured state, right? <clears throat> Here was a, uh, speaking of a mask being, being uh, on, now we see only a reflection as in a mirror then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. I, like the Canadian, the dorky Canadian singer said, he loves me when I'm perfect, if that's a, what I shall be, or something like that, right? That's the way that we Armenians think about our project here on life. Striving toward perfection. Striving to uh, let the world see that light within us, and uh, know, knowing that uh, that's what we see when we look into each other's eyes and engage each other too. Um, I just hope that that's a daily uh, part of your call uh, as, as I try and strive to make it uh, part of mine. I'm, you know, we fall short of that, uh, of that project, but First John assures us, dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is.
thanks for the opportunity to speak to you again and have a fun Halloween. Take care.